Hey, this is Ellie from the Maxon training team. And in this Redshift quick tip, but I'm gonna show you how to set up materials using texture maps. Also how to then change things like color and reflections and even understand what our texture maps are actually doing. First, you'll need your texture maps. You can find a range in our asset browser. There's also a huge selection online for you to choose from or even create your own using programs like Adobe Substance. I've downloaded this diamond plate material for free from Ambient CG. I'll add a link to this material, including some other great resources in the description below. Once you've got your texture maps downloaded, you're ready to start creating the material. But first, let's take a quick look at the different map types. Depending on how your material was originally created and exported will depend on the texture maps you have available to use. In most cases, you'll have a color map, often called base color, albedo, or diffuse. This will be used to control the base color of your material. Next, you'll likely have a roughness map used to define the material reflection roughness. For metal materials, you will often have a metalness map, which will control the varying metalness values. Two other common ones are the bump and normal map. In some cases, you will have one, and in other cases, you'll have both. These are used to create the look of depth and texture on the surface of your model. The difference between these two is a bump map uses grayscale values, which provide up or down information, whereas a normal map uses RGB data, which resembles the XYZ axes. Many materials will also include a displacement map, often called a height map. This can be used to affect the geometry of your model. Unlike bump, displacement actually changes the surface geometry. Finally, depending on the type of material you're recreating, you may also have access to an AO map, which is ambient occlusion, a way to add extra surface shadow detail, an opacity map used to remove certain areas, for example, a wireframe or mesh material, and even an emissive map used to add emission to different areas. Now let's take these texture maps into Cinema 4D and Redshift and start to build the material. Create a new standard Redshift material and double click to open the node editor. Quick side note, this process is the same if you're using the shader graph. To get your texture maps into the node editor, all you need to do is drag and drop the ones you want to use into the window. These individual texture maps are gonna be used to control the different relevant inputs on the standard Redshift material node. Here we've got our color, AO, metalness, roughness, normal, and displacement maps. The order here doesn't matter, but personally, I like to reposition them in the order of the base property inputs. Before you start connecting your nodes together, it's important to adjust the color space in order to get an accurate representation of each texture. Color spaces are used in combination with color profiles as a way of making sure that the same numeric value is displayed as the same color on different media. The easiest way to think about it is anything with color, such as the base color map, needs to be sRGB. And anything that is not processed as color, such as metalness, roughness, normal, etc., needs to be raw. This is because the maps are used as unit values, not color. Now it's time to connect each texture map to the relevant input on the Redshift standard material node. First, the color map will need to connect with the material based color input. Now, if you click your standard material, inside the attributes, you can see the base color input is being controlled by this texture map and you can no longer edit the original setting. Next is the metalness map. This will connect to the metalness input, but before we do that, let's see how this works. If you solo the metalness texture map by hitting the S button here, you can see the grayscale information. This represents numerical data. 100% black is zero and 100% white is one. Anything in between are values between zero and one. If you take a look in the standard material, the metalness setting is a slider from zero to one, meaning when you connect this grayscale texture map, the grayscale values control this number value. So the darker areas will have less metalness and the lighter areas will have more. This understanding works the same for all grayscale data-driven maps. Now you can connect this to the metalness input. Your roughness map works in the same way and connects to the reflection roughness input. Now for the bump and normal maps. On this material, I've got a normal map, but let's talk about both options. Either one requires an additional node in order for Redshift to read it correctly, a bump map node. Add this to your node editor and connect the texture map to the bump input, then connect this to the bump map input on your material. 
So here's where things are slightly different. If you're using a grayscale bump map, you leave the input map type on the bump node as height field. But if you're using a normal map, you need to change this input to tangent space normal. Then from here, you can adjust the height scale value to control the amount of surface detail. Next, you can connect your displacement map. I've already covered this in more detail in another quick tip, which I'll link in the description below. For this, you'll need a displacement node, then connect your texture map into this node, then into the displacement input on the final output, just like this. In order for this to show in your render view, you need to add an RS object tag to your model. Go to geometry, override, then enable tessellation and displacement. The number of subdivisions on your model is important here and needs to be enough to allow for accurate displacement. Finally, you can define the look by controlling the maximum displacement and scale values here. The last texture map is the AO or ambient occlusion map, and there isn't a specific input for this on the standard material. The way this works is by combining the color and AO maps inside a color layer node. The base layer color is the color map, then AO is the layer one color. Now inside the attributes, you can blend between each layer using blending modes like those found in Photoshop. In this instance, multiply works best. Then just reconnect the color layer to the base color of your material. Now your material is complete, but what if you also have an opacity or emission map? Opacity will connect here under the geometry opacity input and an emissive map will connect to the base properties emission color. You can right click to add the input then just increase the weight value. Finally, before we wrap this up, what if you wanted to make some changes to this texture? To remap your material, select all your texture maps and adjust the scale, offset or rotation. Or if you wanted to change the base colors, you can add a color correct node between the color layer and material. Then adjust your hue, saturation or other values. You can even edit the amount of roughness or metalness by adding a ramp node in between the texture and material and use the knots or handles to remap the black and white information. Thanks for watching. If you like these quick tips, please like and subscribe.